driver, Adam. Last week was Veterans Day, and you were a Marine, and at, over a decade ago... I want to get this name right. You co-founded a nonprofit called Arts in the Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you want to bring theater to um, active duty service members? Well, I had just gotten out of the military, and I was interested in, in acting before I, I left for the Marine Corps. And, you know, when you get out, you kind of pursue the thing that you were interested, or at least I did before, because by comparison to the military, it seems uh, attainable, mm -hmm. which is an illusion. But uh, So I, I happened to have gotten to school at, at uh, Juilliard with, with John, actually. With John, right over there. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> that's where we met. Yeah. And, and for the first time, we kind I, I, the connection of language and, and ex, uh, through theater that had nothing to do with the military mm -hmm. and the process of working on something mm -hmm. is, is exactly like being in the military, actually. Obviously, one, you're pretending the stakes are life and death and, and the other that they actually are. Mm -hmm. But the, the team effort of it, that you have a role and you know your role within your, your unit and the person that's leading it is paramount. And if they know what they're doing, what you're doing feels active and relevant and necessary. And if they don't, it feels like a waste of time and dangerous. And it's really not about the individual journey. Uh, it's about be <laughs> uh, acknowledging uh, other people and asking them questions about themselves. But working as a, uh, as a team in a unit, you, you know, and, and it kind of takes the, uh, all to accomplish a mission that's bigger than any one person. And, th and that's exactly what it's like, uh, you know, b being on a film set or a crew. You, you know, everyone's battling technology and time, and there's improvisation under pressure, and, and people are there for you or they're not, you know. You threw a, a benefit event uh, right, right down the street here at yeah, uh, Roundabout, right? The Studio mm -hmm. 54. Yeah, yeah. We've done a lot of times. Uh, oh, right there? Roundabout. This was just, this was fairly recently. Yeah. There you are right there. And look, a familiar face was there. Yeah. There's John playing at it. John, how, um, <laughs> how, how was it? I, I think it's such a beautiful idea to bring the arts to people outside of Hollywood or the coastal elite cities, art circles and things like that particular people who have risked their lives for our freedoms. So people in my family, going back four generations, have all served this country. So I just love the idea. It was great to be there. Um, and John did one of our first performances that we ever did, which was in Camp Pendleton, Camp Pendleton. where I was stationed at. And when we in initially started it, 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 it was a hard sell because you take, you take theater out of a metropolitan area and suddenly it's a weapon. You know, it, it, when someone's performing it live, it's just more memorable and, and, and effective. Uh, uh, but now, because celebrity really breaks down barriers and opens doors for us in, in a sense. And it's, it's really not for the, the higher ups anyway. It's really for people that are, are all over the United States or have joined the military for the for a green card, you know, and they're, they're the grunts. They're, they're, they don't have access uh, uh, to, to theater, which I think is a, a really, it really is just as valuable a tool to communicate a, as a rifle. I think it can save your life. Did it save yours? I think so. There's, a, there's not a lot of emphasis on, on articulating a feeling. And I, I, I saw it in people that I served with when they couldn't, when they couldn't say the thing Mm -hmm. they'd get mad. You know, they, they'd have aggression. When you can't ar express a thought or a feeling, or, or even though you have, uh, but you have no tools to, to get it out, you, you can watch people self-destruct. And, and I, I think when watching something, even if it's not, we, we specifically pick things that have nothing to do with the military, because we're not telling the military what it's like to be in the military. But through like a, to a Tony Kushner play, or a Stephen Adley Gurgis play, or August Wilson, you, you know, play, suddenly you're watching something about, you know, you're watching Fences and you're making a connection uh, that in your life, even though you have nothing, no relationship to those people at all. Their life is completely different than yours. And, and as you feel in your audience, a collective intelligence starts happening in the room in theater with strangers. You know, people have, who have totally different experiences in the way they're telling you about the play. And, and, and that's the, the thing about live performance that I, in theater, that why not share that? with the, the less than 1% of our country that's being asked to bear 100% responsibility for its safety, you know, because they won't get a play, you know? <laughs> or give them a rifle, but they, you know, uh, Sam Shepard is too, too confrontational, you know? <laughs> you know? I think one of the amazing things about human beings is that we all have so many emotions, but we're often so 
poorly trained to share them with each other, that we will go pay money to sit in a dark room and watch people on stage have them for us. Yeah. And there is some magical transformation that happens in us by witnessing the freedom that's happening on stage. And right. it frees you in some way. And a dialogue that is not, that literally people breathe, and start breathing in rhythm. You, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, the, the temperature changes. I mean, and the, the diversity of audience with the diversity of, and specificity of a great story on stage, there's nothing more ancient than that, actually. The idea and something of, that was very common at one time. Oh, it's yeah. It's in our modern lives that theater is only in metropolitan areas. It's, it's, it goes to the Greeks, you know, you know Aeschylus, Euripides, you know, they, they were generals who wrote plays for an audience at war. So they would get together and sit and watch someone in their community enact what was just happening on the battlefront. And, you know, that, that, it's not a new idea. It's actually an ancient one. And actually, when I came back to New York, I, I saw, like, a, I went and saw a movie and went and saw some, a gallery. And, and then I, I saw a, a Carolina Change that was also in the... Right down here. Yeah. At the roundabout. Which is which is amazing. Like it doesn't get more archaic than this in a sense, where it's just a people that we're pretending we don't see, and they're pretending they don't see us, and we're watching you know them you know advocate a life that we don't know. That if it's uh, suddenly we're all reminded of our, our shared humanity, you know, in a way that also in movies I think can happen, which is what's dangerous about streaming. But I won't. Uh, leave that alone. There's something powerful <laughs> about getting in a dark room with strangers and sharing, watching something collective, you know. Um, I hope people are doing it in a dark room right now yeah, at yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. In their beds with sure. strangers. <laughs> well, Adam, it was so great yeah, to have yeah, you yeah, here. Good Thanks to for you being again. here. Sorry for monologuing about it. I love it. I love it. House of Gucci is in theaters November 24th. Adam Driver, everybody. We'll be right back with America Ferrera.